We may not be perfect, Tony, but the safest hands are still our own. We need to be put in check. I just want to consider all our options. Because people that shoot at you usually wind up shooting at me, too. You chose the wrong side. Keep telling yourself that. Hey, what's going on, everyone? The time is finally here for my most anticipated film of the entire year, Captain America Civil War. Oh my gosh, I cannot wait to talk about this. Did it meet my expectations? Did it exceed my expectations? Well, let's get into it. My name is Brandon Keith Avery, and this is just my opinion. Woo! Man, I do not know where to start. I'll just let you know, I love me some Marvel. Got my Captain America shirt on, Civil War background, Spider-Man, Captain America. I cannot wait to talk about this film because as I said, this is my most anticipated film of the year. Now, if you want to know how I feel going into this film, I wanted this to be a perfect 10 out of 10. And of course, I will talk about that later. But just so you know how I rank all the other MCU films, the top three in the whole MCU for me is Iron Man 1, Captain America, The Winter Soldier, and the 2012 Marvel's The Avengers. And as far as quality is concerned, I put Iron Man 1 first, Winter Soldier second, and Avengers third. But guys, I'll just say it off top is this film is absolutely amazing. I mean, they put some things in this film that I have never seen before in any movie or any form of entertainment that's been created by man. And I am literally so happy that I can cry. The only thing that makes me upset right now about this movie is I cannot get up right now to go to a theater to see it again because I cannot wait to see it again. So as you know, or if you didn't know, Captain America Civil War is, of course, based off that comic book adaptation but there is a lot of changes in this film and a lot of people on the online on youtube in the comments sections blogs wherever were just so concerned like oh this is just an avengers 2.5 it's supposed to be captain america but you have all these characters in the movie no this is solely a captain america movie with additional characters as extra and it solely focuses on captain america and it's a direct sequel to the winter soldier and avengers age of ultron and i will say this if you're not really in the comics and you know these movies movies are kind of off and on for you you will get a better understanding if you've seen age of ultron or the winter soldier you don't have to but you will get a better appreciation to why these heroes are coming together colliding when they should be teaming up fighting bad guys instead they're fighting each other and just about the fighting i'll get to that later but yes i said this is a direct sequel to winter soldier and avengers age of ultron and I just have to give all credit due to the directors, Anthony and Joe Russo. They did a phenomenal job and in some areas blew my expectations out of the water. I'm so, so, so happy and excited for them to be taking on the Avengers Infinity War that comes out 2018 and 2019. Now, the first thing that I want to talk about and get out the way is the action. I mean, in this, this, this movie, as far as the action is concerned, oh my gosh, I mean... The action in this movie is light years beyond any other comic book movie you've ever seen. It's possibly even, no, I don't want to say possibly, it is better than any, not any comic book movie, not any super book, superhero movie, but any movie you've ever seen, period. The action is like beyond light years beyond i mean it is just that good i mean you, your jaw is dropping you are salivating at the mouth because everything is so precise and intact in every single character in this movie with it being a captain america movie gets their opportunity to shine i mean absolutely everyone and i i don't even know i i just I'm, I, I, I'm, my mind is boggled. My mind is blown to just how much action is in this movie. I mean, they stepped it up to a whole nother level that's beyond my comprehension. As soon as the film starts out, it's action. I mean, and there's nice hand-to-hand -hand action. There's nice action with weapons. There's nice action with power. There's nice action with set pieces flying around. All these characters and all these different scenarios and stakes, whether they're high or low, the action is there so you will not 
be disappointed with the action. That is literally impossible. Something else that's literally impossible for you not to like. No, it's literally impossible for you not to love Spider-Man in this movie. I know some of the average fans out there maybe have some super fan, super fan, superhero comic book fatigue. And yes, this is the third incarnation of Spider-Man. But I will say he's not he there's only two scenes in this movie with Spider-Man and it did not feel forced. It did not feel shoehorned in. It felt cohesive. It flowed organically. And the two scenes that Spider-Man is in is mind-blowing. I mean, this is, with only two scenes, I can honestly say that this is the best adaptation of the Spider-Man character for Peter Parker and for Spider-Man that we've ever seen. I, I love Tommy McGuire, but hey, I'm sorry, Tommy McGuire, Tom Holland, he got you in Spider-Man. I mean, it's a dream come true. I mean, I, I appreciate what Sony was trying to do with the Sam Raimi's films. I mean, the first one was okay, and I actually love part two with Dr. Octopus, and that's actually, that's still in my top 10 favorite comic book movies of all time, and there's a video that I have addressing that that's in the description box that you can check out, And but one of the things that I did not like about the Sam Raimi Spider-Man films uh, back in the early and mid-2000s is, you know, Peter Parker uh, was a high school student and he's making this advanced suit. No, that is not the case in Civil War. It makes perfect sense how Spider-Man gets his suit and I won't spoil it here. You probably already know if you're a comic book fan, but I'm not going to tell you. It, it fits so well. Um, I love the costume. It didn't look all rubbery and CGI because I was one of those people that was complaining like, yeah, Spider-Man's costume looks a little CGI with all the rubber. Not really feeling it. I had to watch the trailer like 10 times and I probably watched it 20 times to be on board with that suit. But the suit is amazing and I love how they did it. It makes perfect sense how he got the suit. Even how his eyes are, you know, getting bigger and smaller or whatever. That makes perfect sense as well too. I mean, I loved him as Peter Parker. I love the Miss Spider-Man. I mean, everything was great. It's just literally impossible for you not to like this character. It's literally impossible for you not to love this character. I just don't see how. I mean, they knocked this out of the park 10 times over with Spider-Man. Another character that is literally impossible for you not to fall in love with is Chadwick Boseman as Black Panther. Oh my gosh. Are you serious? The way he came onto the scene with that Wakandan accent, Captain, and he's doing all these these stances with his little Panther Tiger moves, and he's he's like fighting in multiple styles within this movie, and it's not even is this movie. He's like it's not a cameo, but I mean he's being debuted in this, and they just show so much, and he is a badass with his clean ass vibranium suit and i just want more of it like right now and it frustrates the hell out of me that i can't get more right now chad chad with bozeman wreck the hell out of this role i mean he has the physicality he has the acting he has the accent and i say accent like that wakanda is a real accent it's an african accent because wakanda is a fictional country in africa but i mean i love every moment of it there is only one nitpick that I have to have to do with Black Panther, but it's not with his character, it's with the Black Panther lore. And of course, I won't get into spoilers here. I'm gonna have a spoiler video like the day that this comes out or Thursday night, but it doesn't have anything to do with Black Panther, but it has something to do with Black Panther, where he comes from. And it's just a small little, little bitty nitpick that you know I probably shouldn't have brought up, but I feel that it's worth it. But I mean, Black Panther is throwing down. He is beating the ass. I mean, like just everything about him is just awesome. And I, I mean, Spider Man and Black Panther. I don't know which one I like more because they were both remarkable and just amazing characters in this Captain America film. But let's talk about Captain America for a second because it is his movie, and I'll throw Iron Man in there too. Now going into this film. I was Team Cap all the way. I mean, I love Iron Man. Iron Man is my boy, Tony Stark. I love the guy. But at the same time, I love Captain America that much more. I mean, I am Team Cap. And as you're watching the film and you're seeing all these things play out, you're kind of bouncing back and forth like, okay, I can be Team Cap. But at the same time, 
I completely understand where Iron Man is coming from. He has a valid reason for wanting to assign these Sokovia Accords because they need to be checked. And something that the film or movie did, film or movie, that the movie did is they gave you a perspective that you didn't see before in all the previous uh, 12 MCU films that even paints a better picture to why the Sokovia Accords is absolutely necessary. Now, I'm not saying that for me personally, at, at any time in the film, I just completely transitioned over and went Team Iron Man. No, I was Team Cap, but at the same time, I really did understand where Iron Man was coming from. And unlike some other superhero films that have come out this year, the film actually gives you a valid reason why they're they're fighting and their stakes and they're not just fighting for the hell of it. I mean, they're actually trying to use their words with dialogue and with scenes that make sense. I don't want to see people just fighting for the hell of it and then, oh, you know what? We shouldn't have been fighting. I wish we would have used our brains and noggin and our words earlier. No, they try to do this. And the fighting is a last ditch effort. And that fighting in this film is amazing. And the action in this movie is off the route. But I know you want to hear about that airport scene in the trailers. I mean, oh my gosh. They could have took that whole scene out and the movie still would have been blowing you away. But that airport scene, oh my gosh, it is freaking ridiculous how amazing it is. I mean, imagine a scene just like this. Now, I know you remember this scene from Avengers in 2012. Yeah, with Iron Man blasting bad guys out of the air, coming down, saving Cap as he's beating ass and beaming his beam off the shield and flying up to see Hawkeye. Imagine a scene way better than that for over 17 minutes straight with all the characters that you see in the trailer blown up in 70 millimeter IMAX. What? Yes, 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 yes. I mean, <sighs> you think you've seen it in the trailers, but I mean, words that cannot literally describe how awesome this scene is. I mean, I'm sitting there watching it, smiling ear to ear. I mean, if someone put a gun to my head and said, stop smiling right now, Brandon, stop smiling, I would be dead because I couldn't stop smiling. I'm just watching it like... <laughs> oh, and all and just like that, and I'm not exaggerating. And I was doing that along with all the other fans in the theater. I mean, it was just ridiculous. And, and the, the, it was so intricate and they really took their time to iron all that out, all the punches, all the kicks, all the blasts. I mean, it makes sense because every character fights everybody. I mean, I, I don't want to spoil it here and just to tell you, well, every character does fight everybody, but I still don't want to spoil it. But you would think that if somebody that's extremely weak with no powers that's fighting somebody extremely powerful like Thor, and no, Thor is not in this movie, that it would be no contest, but they still came up with a clever way to make it fun and interesting and challenging. I mean, the, and, and the thing is, when the stakes are so high in this film, they're still able to fit in comedic elements that make you laugh while you're still trying to take things seriously. And I, I don't mean to knock another film, but that's something that I did not like about Age of Ultron is because at the end, I want to see everybody fighting like, man, if they don't give it 100%, the world is going to die. And I did not like it when bullets are flying and Quicksilver is in the cross, is in the, uh, in the line of sight and he's making jokes like, hey guys, don't shoot me. Or when and Quicksilver runs by and Hawkeye pulls his arrow and I'm like, hey, I could shoot him. Nobody would notice. Or that when Vision picks up Thor's hammer and hits it and Thor's like, yeah, it's a nice flick of the wrist. I don't want to see crap like that when the world is at stake, but they're able to, in Civil War, they're able to put jokes like that within the fighting and it works and it doesn't lose any stakes. It doesn't lose its impact. It still has a strong, powerful impact in that scene, not just in that scene, but all the other scenes. Now, you've heard me raving, talking about all the things that I love. So let's talk about some of the things that I did not like. Earlier, I talked about all the characters in this freaking film are amazing. And they all are, except, and you probably already heard this from other reviews, and it's the villain. The villain is just, he's not bad, but he's not great. He doesn't match the greatness that everything, that all the, my goodness, I can't talk. He, the villain does not match all the greatness that this film has to offer. Um, I mean, I don't want to spoil it. You probably already know his name, but 
you know, to be honest with you, he was kind of unnecessary. And some may call him a plot device, and he is, and that's okay. When I think about it, his involvement in the movie was not entirely necessary. And that comes to another gripe of the film. And one of the reasons why I love When a Soldier so much, Captain America When a Soldier so much, is their storyline in that film was absolutely perfect. Just looking at the story alone, it said perfect 10 out of 10. It just flowed all the way through, and it had me at the edge of my seats. In Civil War, the story does not flow as well, but that still does not mean that it's bad. I mean, it's just slightly like the Winter Soldier story is here. Civil War story is like right down there. You know, Age of Ultron story will be down here, but no, Civil War story is like right there. So as far as the story is concerned, Winter Soldier has it beat slightly, and that's solely due to what the villain was trying to do. And... I like the pieces that they were trying to put together with his role, but when it comes to the end of the film, it didn't entirely make sense. I mean, I can assume what they were trying to do, but there was one part and I was like, there was a nice reveal in the end, but there, it could have been revealed in a different way. I mean, let, let's just look at it like this. Thanksgiving, everybody likes to eat during Thanksgiving. And if someone were to prepare your favorite meal and just give it to you like this, it's going to look good and it's going to taste good. But imagine I take that same exact meal and I open up a Walmart shopping bag and I dump the meal in the bag and then give it to you. Well, yeah, if you eat it, it's still going to taste the same. Still probably going to be good, but you're going to be like, yeah, this presentation could have been a lot better. But that's just a small knock on everything else that the film did so well. And something that I want to praise the film on, and The Dark Knight did this in 2008. Everybody was watching the trailer like over and over and over and over and over again to where you memorize the lines, but when you finally saw the movie, you realized that they used different takes. They did the exact same thing in Civil War so that you can experience some of the dialogue fresh. And some of the things that I, I like they did, there's some I wish they would have left the takes that were in the trailer, but that's just, you know, a small knock. It's a small nitpick, but guys, overall, this film is freaking fantastic. I mean, to me, there is a difference between the best and what's my favorite and or entertaining. So as far as quality is concerned, Captain America Civil War is not the best in the MCU because the story was slightly better in Winter Soldier and slightly better in Iron Man 1 to me. And what I mean by that is just they're... they're is it just flows completely there's no rocky no bumps or anything like that but if you want to take a two and a half hour two hour and 30 minute movie there may be 120 seconds in there where it was a or two or three minutes where it was just a little bit rocky but i mean that's two or three minutes out of a two hour and 30 minute movie so i mean still how much can you ask for but if you want to know what my favorite film is out of the MCU, the most entertaining film out of the MCU, oh, hands down, it goes to Civil War. I could not ask for anything else. I mean, Captain America, Rex Shop, Iron Man, Rex Shop, Spider-Man, Black Panther, Winter Soldier, The Vision, Scarlet Witch, Ant-Man, Falcon. I mean, some of the things that he was doing with his wings, I mean, it, it was... I, I, I just couldn't be any happier. I mean, they stepped this movie up to a whole nother level. It is the best action that you will ever witness in your life. And I said that with no exaggeration, I am not hyping this. If you do not agree with me, there is something wrong with you. No, everyone is entitled to their own opinion. All movies are subjective, but it is literally, you know, just too damn hard not to say that this movie is amazing and that this action is not the best that you've ever seen. So enough of me rambling. It's time to rate this thing. Now, given the story, I would rate this a 9 out of a 10. But because the action is so freaking mind-blowingly amazing, I got to crank it back up. So if I were to rate Captain America Civil War... Out of a 1 out of a 10, I give it a 9.5 out of 10 because it is that freaking awesome. So, guys, that's just my opinion. Were you lucky enough to see an early screening of Civil War? Have you seen it? Do you want to see it? Have I turned you on? Have I turned you off? Let me know in the comment section below. Let's get this conversation going and keep it flowing.
If you like this video, go ahead and give me the thumbs up. And if you didn't like the video, that's fine. And I don't really care. You can still leave a comment below why and still give me the thumbs up. Since you're watching this on YouTube, go on and help your boy out and subscribe to my YouTube channel so you can get all the content that I have to provide in the past and in the future. And if you, if you subscribe, you're going to get a copy of my spoiler field review that I'm going to talk about absolutely everything in this film. And if you want a written review of this, you can head over to the site www.justmyopinion.net. You can find me on Facebook at facebook.com slash justmyopinion or at Instagram and Twitter at justmyopinion84. So guys, thank you again for tuning in for my opinion slash review of my most anticipated film of the year, Captain America Civil War. And before you go, don't forget that my name is Brandon Keith Avery. And it's just my opinion. Peace.